Bubble sort is a basic sorting algorithm, but it is essential for any aspiring programmers. So grab a notebook and let's get started. The basic idea of a bubble sort is simple. It compares each element with the next element and swaps their position if they are in the wrong order. It's called a bubble sort because the smaller elements bubble to the top of the list as the larger elements sink to the bottom. The best way to learn exactly what the bubble sort does is to see a very simple example. So let's start with just six numbers and we want to put these in order from lowest to highest using the bubble sort. Here are six numbers. We can think of these as numbers in a Python list with an index that starts at zero and goes up to five. We're going to mark those index numbers by the actual numbers that are in the list. Now the first two elements we want to check to see they're in order. Well they're not, one is less than seven. So we want to swap them around. Now in the Python code, because the first number is greater than the second number, you want to move that so we can see that with an if statement and then we simply move the numbers that are in the first and second place to the second and first place so we swap them around there we go they're swapped now let's move to the next two elements they're in order so we don't need to swap them now let's compare 8 and 4 well we need to swap them so let's change the order so now we have 4 and 8. We move the next pair, 8 and 3, we need to swap them, 3 and 8. And then finally, we look at the last two elements, 8 and 2, again we need to swap them. So now we have 2 and 8. Now that was the first pass, but we can already see some patterns forming. So let's have a look what we've done so far. You can see here when we compared the first two elements, we've got if nums and 0 and 1, and then we swap 0 and 1 around. Now, if we were going to use a variable i rather than 0 and 1, we could call that i and i plus 1. Now, the next two elements that we compared were 1 and 2, index 1 and 2. So that would be i plus 1 and i plus 2. And we can look at each stage when we compare two elements and we can see that we could change the number like 3 and 4 to i plus 3 and i plus 4. So we can use a variable. Now, what we could do, instead of just using i as 0, is increase i by 1 every time we compare elements. So here, if we look at our code and we look at i and i plus 1, when we start, we have i is 0, so i plus 1 is 1. Then the next time in the loop, next time we iterate in our loop, i is going to be 1, and i plus 1 is going to be 2. And then it's going to be 2 and 3, 3 and 4. And finally, 4 and 5. So we can use a for loop. Now, we only want to go up 5 times, and there's 6 numbers. So that's the length of the numbers minus 1. But we can easily do that in a loop. And instead of using numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we can just use i and i plus 1. So now we've got an if statement. We've got our swapping elements if we need to. And we've got a variable i that goes from 0 up to the number, the length of the list, minus 1, which in this case is 5. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, because we've got 5 numbers starting at index 0. So now we understand how to compare an element at index i and i plus 1. We can move on to the second pass. So here we've got 1 and 7, so we don't need to swap them around. 7 and 4, oh, they're the wrong order, so we can swap them. 
4 and 7. 7 and 3 again swap, 3 and 7. 7 and 2 again we need to swap them, so we now have 2 and 7. 7 and 8 we won't need to swap. Next round, round 3. 1 and 4 we don't need to swap, 4 and 3 we do need to swap. 4 and 2 we do need to swap. So now that round is finished because we now have the correct order from 4, 7 and 8 onwards. So round 4, well we only need to swap the 2 and the 3. And now we have our list in complete correct order using the bubble sort. So we can see here the different stages of what the numbers were. And look at the end numbers. You can see on each pass, each round, the end number is in the correct place. So you can see the first round 8 was in the correct place, then 7, then 4, 3. So we put in the last element in the correct place in each pass. With our current for loop on each pass, we're going to go to the end of the list and compare the last two elements. But we don't need to do that because on each pass we know an additional element at the end of the list is in the correct place. We only need to go one less place in the list on each pass. So instead of going to the end of the list minus 1, we can go to the end of the list minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, and minus 5. So if we create a for loop to go through each pass, each round, we can see, using a variable j, that we can change, instead of going to length of numbers minus 1, we can go to length of numbers minus 1 minus j, the variable we use to go through each round. So we can do that using not just minus 1 but minus j, which is the variable in the outside list. So we end up with the bubble sort algorithm. We have an outside loop to go through the passes each round. We have the inside loop to compare numbers, but not the end numbers that have already been sorted. We have an if statement to check to see if they're in order or not. And if two elements are not in order, we can swap them around. There is a great new opportunity for anyone interested in learning about Python or any other areas of computing. In the next year, new courses will be added to the Outs Academy and they will be available to you for free. Written by university professors, they will be specifically designed for international students, which means they'll be easy to understand using simple language. They will even be helped to improve your English, if you're interested. How can this help you? Well, leave a comment. Any suggestions you make could be turned into a course. Motivated learners deserve equal access to opportunities. Help us to help you. And there you have it learners. A complete explanation of the bubble sort algorithm and how to implement it in Python. We hope you found this tutorial helpful and that you're now ready to tackle more sorting algorithms. They'll be coming soon. As always, practice makes perfect. So don't be afraid to experiment with different lists and variation of the code. Remember, the more you write, the better you'll get at coding. If you like this video, if it helped you, please click the like. If you haven't already, subscribe. And there will be some new videos on sorting algorithms like selection and insertion very, very soon.